So we are in the middle of Black History Month, and starting tonight and going forward on this show, we want to introduce you to some of the states of our disunion, states where Americans are struggling to exercise their right to vote, to make their way out of poverty, and to live free of government control of their wombs. We will cover the states facing the hardest struggles for democracy, the ones banning books and curtailing the right to choose and passing draconian anti-trans laws. But we'll also show you some of the states that are winning, where our democracy is working. But tonight, we want to start with a state that unfortunately is still stuck in its white supremacist past, Mississippi, where a white supermajority in the heavily gerrymandered state house voted to create an entirely separate court system and expanded police force within the city of Jackson, the blackest city in America, that would be appointed completely by white state officials. That means that the voters of Jackson, which is 80 percent black, do not get to elect the judges or prosecutors in this separate district, unlike what happens in every other part of the state. White officials currently hold all the statewide positions that would do the appointing, and no black official has ever held any of these positions. In fact, the last time a black Mississippian held statewide office was during Reconstruction. And the state, despite being one-third African-American, is gerrymandered to have exactly one black congressman, Representative and January 6th Committee Chairman Benny Thompson. Meanwhile, the Republican who introduced this draconian bill says it's because of the high crime rates and backlog of court cases in the county that contains Jackson, which, did I mention, is the state capital? Jackson's mayor has called the plan colonialist and racist and said it reminds him of apartheid. And joining me now is the mayor of Jackson, Chokwe Antar Lumumba. Um, And Mayor Lumumba, please explain how it can be possible that the capital um, of Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, is, I think, to your point, going to be governed under apartheid style? Well, I think that uh, to speak to it honestly, uh, I'm I'm reflecting on the words of Coach Dennis Green, who once said that they are who we thought they were. Uh, You know, as we've been calling out these clearly racist policies, uh, that has been done uh, much to the chagrin of state leadership, uh, saying that we're giving Mississippi a black eye. And to be clear, Uh, It is not our words that give Mississippi a black eye. It is the actions that they're taking, Uh, actions that will not allow or disenfranchise uh, voters in Jackson, in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, This this particular uh, law is fraught with constitutional violations, uh, equal protection. Uh, It is seeking to create a district which is the most densely white population populated area in the city of Jackson, Uh, in addition to uh, a police force or, or a militarized force uh, that does not have uh, direct uh, accountability to the residents. Uh, within the district that already exists, there have been numerous claims of, of uh, issues of, of police misconduct that are not being challenged, that are not being followed up on. Uh, and so there's a multitude of concerns here. It sounds like 1980-era Pretoria. I mean, in in 1890, Mississippi enacted a racist constitution that to strip uh, African Americans of any rights and the right to vote because of the really, you know, historic and heavy voting by former enslaved people to elect statewide officials and the lieutenant governor to really, you know, make an incredible strides. How could it be that more than 100 years after the Civil War, Mississippi still is governed this way when it has the highest black population in the entire country, percentage-wise. Well, I I thank you for recounting that history, Joy, because uh, along with that history was a narrative that said that uh, it was in the slave or it was in black people's interest not to be burdened uh, with that heavy weight of having to select electoral leadership, Uh, much in the same way as they have created this district that they set to a point the representative who created this legislation or introduced this legislation suggested that the reason that he thought that these judges should be appointed rather than elected is because we wanted, quote, uh, the best of the best, uh, which is to suggest that Jackson residents are not intelligent enough or, or aware of their, their needs enough in order to elect those, uh, those individuals for themselves. Uh, and, and so this has been a battle that we've been in uh, for, for some time. Uh, It is because they are allowed to bring Trojan horses, such as the Capitol Complex uh, District, which was initially introduced in 2017 as a suggested aid to infrastructure. Uh, At that time, myself, along with a coalition of people that called ourselves the Coalition of Economic Justice, opposed it because we saw what it was. Uh, But you did have some legislators uh, that looked like us who were in support. Uh, But I do want to be clear that what they were presented with 
uh, was not what we see today. They were presented with an opportunity to assist a, a community that is in much need of infrastructure support. And so we were, were forced to compete against our interests. Uh, you, 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 water, there's still a water crisis in Jackson. Federal funds have been pledged. It, it appears now that the, the Mississippi white legislators are trying to take over those funds and take them out of your hands and other elected uh, local Jackson officials' hands. This, as Brett Favre, is threatening to sue the people who pointed out that he was in possession of funds to build his daughter a, a volleyball complex that belonged to the impoverished people in the state of Mississippi. He was essentially in, 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 in a mode of taking from the poor, and now he's suing for his reputation back. It, it feels like everything is upside down in Jackson and in Mississippi. It, it feels that way because that's the truth. Um, and, and at a time where uh, the state is littered with um, questions of integrity, uh, where there's incompetence there, they charge communities like Jackson who have been devoid of resources of, of being uh, the ones that are incompetent. Uh, there has been a willful indifference uh, or a, a uh, intentional neglect around the issues that, that Jackson needs. Yeah. Uh, and this is part and parcel of a larger effort. And, and my guess is, I'll bet you Tate Reeves and them are busy trying to pass laws, trying to outlaw history, because you wouldn't want people to learn how we got here. Jackson, Mississippi Mayor Chokwe Antar Lumumba, thank you very much. <laughs>